Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I've got a first impressions to do for you. Um, I unboxed this knife just a day or two ago uh, from River's Edge Cutlery, and uh, this is the Benchmade Bailout. But it's not a normal Benchmade Bailout, because River's Edge Cutlery is the best. Um, they've gone ahead and reground this, which is an option straight from them. When you are checking out with this knife, you can literally click, I want it reground as a drop point, and then it will come to you as such. Um, I don't hate Tantos, but I like drop points better. So this one is a drop point bailout, which I really, really appreciate. Um, the other thing that's different about this bailout is the same day that I opened it up, um, I had already ordered, in anticipation of this arriving, a replacement backspacer. So you'll notice it doesn't have that stupid snaggle tooth pommel thing that sticks out for a lanyard or whatever purpose they want to say it's for. I do not like that backspacer that comes on this knife one bit. I really, really actually quite dislike it. Um, in my opinion, it almost ruined the knife. So the fact that I have this one as a drop point and with this rock scale design, I think they call this their geared backspacer in titanium with a bronze anodized finish makes this bailout way more compelling to me uh, than it typically comes. Uh, this one is 3V blade steel. There is another version of the bailout now with aluminum green OD scales um, that comes with an M4 blade steel. I like M4 and I like 3V. Um, for my purposes, I, I intend to use this knife primarily as a light outdoor carry, especially now that we're getting into summer and I'm gonna be hiking in lighter shorts a lot. Um, I figured this would be a great option as a true outdoor knife, um, being just a little bit bigger. It's only a hair bigger really than the bug out, um, but coming in 3V blade steel, that's a pretty optimum outdoor steel because of its incredibly high toughness. So. Um, this is the bailout. Um, first impressions on it are actually really good, especially because I changed that immediately. I'm going to review and uh, go over this knife and do everything as if it has this on it, because in my opinion, um, you should, uh, the second you get yours, switch this out. I just, I do not like that backspacer thing that comes on it. So, assume that uh, everything I say about this knife is forgetting that it came with that and it's as if it came with this on it because in my opinion that's a must on this knife. Anyways, um, this knife, first impressions are really good. I had held the bail out before owning this one, um, but it was only like for a couple of minutes checking out the one that my brother owns. It wasn't like a, a long term. I never had it in pocket, anything like that. Um, but I have had my bug out for a very long time and have extensive <laughs> experience with that one. So this being so similar to the bug out, I felt like I kind of knew what to expect and it feels very familiar to me. Um, the ergos are a little bit different. The handle we gain just a tiny bit of length over the bug out, not much. But the biggest difference is that we have kind of this guard shaped here. So because of that guard, um, it gives you kind of a thumb ramp here, which I actually like more than I thought I would. I really like the ergos on the bug out. So I felt like I was worried that by changing it a little bit, I wasn't gonna like it as much. But this feels to kind of suit, um, in my opinion, the kind of designed purpose of the knife, being a little bit more kind of tactical, a little bit more outdoorsy, just a little bit more hardcore than the regular bug out. Having this guard does feel appropriate and I don't dislike the ergos of it. In fact, it feels pretty good. We do have some really light Light jimping here. Um, the jimping is done on those small steel liners that are inside, um, but it's nice and rounded. None of it's very sharp, and I like the traction it provides. It's well done jimping. Um, that is the only spot on this knife where there is jimping, other than, of course, this backspacer, which I've installed. I guess you could call that jimping, but it's really large and really round, so again, it's not like super traction-y. It's almost just more of like a cool aesthetic thing and, and provides a little bit of texture. Um, but yeah, so the handle on this one, I really like on first impressions. It feels great in hand. I really like it quite a bit. Um, the blade profile, <laughs> since it's reground to a drop point, I love. Um, this just feels like a slightly larger bug out blade now, and it's in 3V, which I love the bug out, um, but S30V is pretty vanilla at this point in my opinion. So having essentially um, a, a slightly enhanced bug out with 3v blade steel is pretty cool to me i'm really digging it um 
I'm going to go ahead and get in front of the camera in a moment so I can talk a little bit more about my thoughts on it. Um, but I did want to show some up close and uh, kind of personal details on this one before I showed my face talking about it. So you can see it's rocking the same clip as the bug out. That's Benchmade's mini deep carry clip. It's one of my favorite clips in the knife world period right now. Just works so great, carries so great, functions really well. It comes right to the butt of this knife. So when this knife is in pocket, all you really see is a clip. You don't see knife sticking out, which I think is what a deep carry clip should do. The positioning on it is perfect for that. Um, it's rocking the same access lock that we know and love from Benchmade. Um, I will say that this one came off center to me. I tried a little bit to adjust it. If you watch the video of me installing this, um, I fiddled with it a little bit. I was unsuccessful. I will eventually do a full disassembly and really work on getting it centered. But in the meantime, it's fully functional. It's not rubbing the scale. Um, the action feels great to me. So I've left it for the moment, but it is off center. And uh, a lot of people who complain about Benchmade's QC complain about centering a lot. So in this case, they are correct. It, it was not on center. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and hop in front of the camera and talk some more about it. But that is the glamour shot, if you will, and kind of the anatomy of this knife. All right, so now I'm in front of the camera, although I just realized sitting here, this tree is peeing on me. It's, uh, it's dripping all over my brand new River's Edge cutlery shirt, which is a bummer, but I'm sure it'll wash out. It's just some sap or something. I don't know. Maybe a squirrel's up there pissing on me. Who knows? Anywho, um, this is the bailout. Now, like I mentioned a little bit while this was in front of the camera, I have kind of a philosophy of use for this knife. And so um, part of what I'm gonna be doing out here today, it's gonna be a separate video, but I'm gonna be doing some field testing on this knife because the bug out has been one of my favorite knives to carry for a long time. Um, it makes it in pocket a lot, um, either as a primary or as a secondary. It is truly, in my opinion, the knife that is best at disappearing in the pocket. And a lot of people throw that term around for a lot of different knives, um, but the bug out actually kind of does that in my opinion. Um, so this being essentially a slightly, and I do mean slightly, it's not much larger, a slightly larger version of the bug out with an enhanced blade steel offering, slightly different ergos, um, it's appealing to me. I recently tried, if you haven't seen uh, the mini bug out, I borrowed my brother's for about a week, carried it a few times, tried some minor cutting with it, and frankly, that knife was not for me. I just didn't love the mini bug out like I hoped I would or like I even expected I would. Um, I just found that in my opinion, for my uses, it was pointless to have a smaller bug out because the regular bug out is already small enough. Um, it's not a knife that really needed to be made smaller. I've had a few people say that in their opinion, the reason why they offer a smaller version is for places where it's illegal to carry knives with longer blade lengths or whatever it may be. Frankly, me personally, I don't really care about that. Um, I live in Cal California and I carry knives that are longer than three inches frequently. I've never had any issues with it. Um, I'm not out doing reckless things with my knives. You can say I'm an idiot for doing that, um, but it is what it is. Um, this, however, being slightly larger than the bug out and having a better steel, arguably, uh, than the bug out, at least for outdoors like this, foreseeably, um, it's way more compelling. Now, there are a couple reasons why I never bought a bailout for myself. The first one was that horrendous backspacer that if you, it's not clear already, I dislike very much so. I just really don't like um, glass breakers on knives ever. I don't like lanyard holes on knives. I never use them. I don't like things that stick out for no reason on the butt of a knife. It just, in my opinion, is useless. For anything I would use this knife for, that feature would never help. It would only get in the way, especially because I do, frankly, kind of like having knives that feel good in reverse grip. Um, it's not that I use reverse grip a ton. It's not that I'm out in knife fights and I'm having to use dagger grip or anything like that. Um, but every now and then I do put a knife into reverse grip, especially if I'm prying or something. And this is 3V. This is a blade steel that should foreseeably be pretty decent at prying. In fact, a lot of what Benchmade said in the beginning of this knife about its... Um, 
heat treat <laughs> that a lot of people were getting real upset about. I think this one's heat treated better than those original batch were, but nonetheless, a lot of what Benchmade was saying in defense of that kind of lower number heat treat was that 3V is a steel that's built for prying. And so having a lower heat treat would give you a, a better ability to pry, I suppose. So anyways, 3V blade steel is kind of designed for that. And I like being able to put my thumb on top of my knife and reverse grip. That's the best way to do it in my opinion, especially if you're jamming into something. Because if you slide down this knife as it hits into something hard, you're gonna be real upset that you did so as your fingertips all, or as the pads of your fingers all go across that sharp edge. Just not gonna be fun. So this backspacer is perfect for that, the one that I've added in. The one that comes on it is terrible for putting your thumb on top of it. It's super uncomfortable. It's angled poorly. It's not rounded. The only purpose I see it serving is to provide a lanyard attachment spot, just something I'm never going to do to this knife. So that being said, that was something that stopped me from buying it. And um, not that I hate Tantos, but a Tanto blade shape on this knife didn't really like do anything for me. Certain designs, I feel like a Tanto makes a ton of sense. I have a ZT0620. That knife is an Atanto, and I love that that knife is a Tanto. It feels right for that knife. This knife doesn't really feel that way for me. So the fact that from River's Edge Cutlery, I could get this knife as a drop point straight from them without any extra work on my part. It still came as fast as it would have ordering anything from them. It was here in like two days from when I placed the order. Um, they reground this for me. Lightning quick, did a perfect job on it. All of the edge bevel looks fantastic. It's even on both sides. There is just nothing that looks like that makes this knife appear like it didn't come from Benchmade with a drop point, which is exactly what you want to see with somebody doing kind of mod work for you. So the fact that I got this one as a drop point and the second that I pulled the trigger on it, I also pulled the trigger on this backspacer made it all of a sudden make a ton of sense for me. Now, I guess you could make an argument that you shouldn't have to change so much about a knife um, right when you get it to like it. Um, but sometimes there's uh, that can also be kind of fun. So um, even though this is the first impressions video on the bailout, I guess I'm getting kind of into the weeds about knife modding in general and stuff like that. But here's my point. Um, this knife is comprised of materials and components that I frankly really like and I already know I enjoy from other Benchmade models, i.e. the bug out. So the fact that I knew coming into it that I would have to alter this knife to make it right for me, um, I feel like in this case makes sense in my head. Because for me to kind of build a great lightweight outdoor folder, um, there's not something else that exists in a configuration similar to this that I can just buy. And so it's kind of fun to me that I'm getting something that's a little bit unique, even though it comes from something that's very standard. Um, I don't know if this is making any sense, but that's just kind of the way my brain is, is processing this whole thing. And now that I have this knife, I'm kind of thinking there might even be more that I do to this knife. And it's not an uncommon platform to mod. A lot of people mod bailouts, a ton of people mod bug outs. I like my bug out just the way it is because that knife is just like an all around beater, lightweight EDC knife for me. And I like to just beat on it the way it is. And I said in my mini bug out video, I almost think of my bug out as like a disposable knife, not in the sense that I'd actually like throw it away, but I bought that knife for somewhere around a hundred bucks. That's a little less than they retail for. I bought it secondhand, um, but it was brand new in box from the person I bought it from. And I got it right around a hundred dollars for a hundred dollars with S30V super lightweight construction and for how easy it is to carry, it's a knife that can go with me anywhere and I don't have any reservations about pulling it out and going through whatever material is in front of me. Whether that S30V should be able to handle it or not, I'm just gonna attack things with that knife and I'm not gonna worry about ruining it because it's a knife that I will drive into the ground and if I happen to get it past its limits and break it or get it to fail somehow, then I'll buy another one. And I wouldn't have any reservations about buying another one, that's how much I like the knife. But that being said, this knife to me has more of like a specified purpose in the way I want to use it. Some people might buy the bailout the way it comes and use it like I use my bug out and for them that works. For me, I wouldn't have used this knife like that. The bug out already does that and it does it better than this knife does. 
But this knife with the 3V blade steel um, and with its slightly larger but still totally pocketable, really reasonable size and incredibly lightweight will make a great summer hiking outdoor folder. In fact, even if I'm doing like in another season, a really long hike where I want to be ultra lightweight and I'm carrying a bunch of gear and I don't want to have an overbuilt folder on me, this would be a fantastic option for something like that. Um, in a few months, I'm hoping to hike Mount Whitney. A knife like this will probably be the knife that I want to have in my pocket because it's going to be super comfortable, super lightweight on a really long kind of endurance hike. This is a great option for that. So to me, to take this knife and to build it the way that I really want it and make kind of my ultimate outdoor EDC lightweight folder is a, a fun project. So this knife ultimately, assuming I find the right set, will probably get a set of aftermarket scales. Uh, the ones I'm looking at right now that I'm leaning towards will be a combination of materials, which would be really cool. I definitely want some micarta on it. Um, I may update the hardware so that it's all kind of bronzed to match the backspacer. Um, I might do new thumb studs. I might change essentially everything about this knife except for the clip <laughs> at the end of the day. And then the liners, the lock mechanism, but even the blade has been reground. So the only things that might be exactly as Benchmade sent it would basically be the internals in the clip. Um, and to me, that's fine. Because even if I end up being in this knife for $300, then I have a really cool $300 3V blade steel drop point, cool handle material, lightweight outdoor folder. And that's not something that I really, there, there's no other option out there on the market that's built like that to the specs that I would build this. So. I, I think it's kind of a, a cool avenue I may go down. But before I go any deeper with this knife, I'm gonna be testing it pretty thoroughly. Um, I like it already, having had it in pocket out here today, um, having carried it a little bit since I opened it, it carries like my bug out. It feels remarkably similar in the pocket to my bug out. If it's heavier, I don't notice. It feels about the same. Um, I mean, once you start counting, start counting like tenths of an ounce, then I don't know, I don't. So this knife feels ultra lightweight, profile's great, the action is fantastic, centering could be better, um, but functionally, this knife is excellent and I really, really like it. So the next step is gonna be field testing this, making sure that I'm getting what I want out of the blade and the cutting performance um, and that it's working for me in that way. And then if all of that goes right, uh, which I assume it probably will, um, then this knife is gonna be getting enhanced even further. But at this point, I really like it. Uh, my first impressions are strong on it. Um, if you've watched my bug out video, you'll know how much I love the bug out. And this being so similar to it without sacrificing size like the mini bug out does, um, this is a win in my book. So especially because River's Edge offers it as a drop point and makes it so easy, it's just a great way to get started with this knife in my opinion. And uh, I guess that's gonna be that. I, I'll have a lot more to say about this knife once I use it a fair bit. Um, but yeah, my first impressions are great on it. I really do like the bailout so far, um, assuming that you swap that backspacer out. And uh, if you're not a Tanto fan or just prefer a drop point like me, then assuming that you also get the drop point, but there's nothing wrong with the Tanto. Um, so I'll let that be that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get started on my next video because I'm about to cut some stuff with this. So you guys will be seeing more of this very soon. And uh, thanks for checking it out with me.